chamois flannel shirts are just flannel shirts that are thicker and usually from a very a very thick heavy cotton material many of them are just plain color with no patterns you will find plenty that are camouflage or that have some kind of wildlife scene or rarely they'll have actual plaid on them but chamois flannel shirts are actually better than flannels to find in general especially with more common or garbage brands or less than less than optimal brands let's say um, the sell through rate is much higher for chamois flannels than it is for flannels especially in the more common brands this is what one of them looks like I'm sure you've seen them before maybe you weren't sure what they were called but they've got the thick material it's the brushed cotton very fuzzy you know that's what they look like so when it comes to which ones you should be looking for anything in the big brands that you already know about the big menswear brands that have a high sell through rate to begin with obviously you'll be looking for them in those brands but the purpose of this video is to kind of enlighten you on some other things that you might not have known these chamois flannels can actually be quite good even in normally brands that I would not pick up the flannel shirts in because the sell through rate is just too low so right now I just want to go through a few of them and give you the sell through rates on regular flannels and the sell through rate on the chamois flannels so LL Bean the sell through rate on standard flannels is 39 percent on the chamois flannels it's 85 percent quite a big difference J Crew I would never pick up a regular flannel shirt it's 27 percent sell through rate with the chamois flannels is 85 percent sell through rate on a standard J Crew this is not Wallace and Barnes this is a standard J Crew Orvis 41 percent normally I'd rarely pick up Orvis but if it's a chamois flannel it's 121 percent sell through rate Eddie Bauer do not pick up their flannel shirts you'll be sitting on it forever unless you get them for 50 cents 23 percent sell through rate on normal 77 percent on chamois flannels big difference Carhartt it's kind of not a great example it's 48 percent on normal ones and 59 percent on chamois Carhartt's really right now it's kind of overblown out there honestly there's just so many people have Carhartt fever it's just kind of I leave a lot of it behind Polo Ralph Lauren 40 percent for normal 61 percent for chamois so still not great but better than normal Cabela's doesn't seem to make a big difference if unless you get into the vintage Cabela's which could be a little bit better but it's 52 percent for normal and 59 percent for the chamois now I could go on for a long time about all the different brands and how the chamois flannels sell better but I think you get the point I want to go through some and show you some actual live examples of these shirts so that you can get a feel for them the first brand I want to highlight is LL Bean so LL Bean the basic flannel shirts it's not always a great pickup but the chamois like this one here will sell very good in fact like I said 85 percent sell through rate so there's room there if you want a quick sale you could undercut a little bit sell yours a little cheaper and get it out the door faster or you could just wait I mean right now it's uh, the beginning of November so we've got time if you find these right now you should be able to sell them before the season's over that's kind of why I'm doing this now the ones with the patterns are gonna sell quicker the vintage ones not always but sometimes will sell quicker the thing with these is it's about the warmth it's about the function and people want these things because they'll keep them warm without having to put on a jacket and they're great for outdoor stuff camping hunting 
whatever people do outdoors, even fishing. And these are great because they tend to get beat up and they're very, very durable. The LL Bean chamois flannel is a great pickup if you find them now. Go ahead and pick it up if you get it for a good price because you can see these people are asking $39, $25. What they really sell for, let's take a look here. Lots of best offers taken. $18, bucks, $22.88. $24, $25, $23, with $17.05 shipping. That's surprising. And that's that's vintage though, so that, that could that's why. So yeah, this is it. The you'll get anywhere from fifteen if you have a shirt you just want to move and it's not in great shape, up to twenty-five to possibly twenty-nine if you're lucky. This guy got twenty-eight. 77 32 here because it's in great shape the red ones I've noticed tend to do well this is women's I'm not sure why it's in the men's unless I screwed up on my men's I thought I was in men's oh my, I probably it's probably my fault but you get the point they're very plain looking they've got the two pockets they're thick they're heavyweight and they sell way better than normal flannel shirts, especially in these middling or very common brands. Vintage LL Bean, as you just saw, can go for a little more. Um, there's not too much to say. I won't go into the tag. Everyone knows what the LL Bean tag looks like. Uh, the next one I want to highlight is the Woolrich, especially the vintage Woolrich. Pre-owned. Men's. With these vintage Woolrich, you can do quite well. The sell-through rate on them is 60.9% on vintage Woolrich because people price them up. But regular Woolrich chamois flannels that aren't vintage will sell for a 71% sell-through rate. So if you put vintage in the title and price it up, it's going to take longer to sell. If you put vintage in the title and sell it at a reasonable price, you'll sell it quicker. So these are the Woolrich. As you can see, the majority of them are plain colors, and a lot of them are red. I'm not sure why, it just is. I find these a lot, and there are a lot of red ones. I would ask a little more for this bear one, for sure. So vintage Woolrich, you'll find them with the camo, or like this frog camo here, duck camo. I don't know all the different camos, but this Aztec one should sell pretty good. So Woolrich chamois flannels, good. 71% sell through on normal Woolrich. 60.9 on uh, vintage Woolrich because people are trying to price gouge. So the next one is Eddie Bauer, which I would rarely, if ever, pick up an Eddie Bauer flannel shirt. There's just 23% sell through rate. It's just abysmal. But the chamois flannels are 77% sell through rate on these. Again, they're very plain, most of them. This one has stripes, so this should go pretty quick. This is older, vintage, made in USA. This is a good deal, 20 bucks plus $5 shipping. That should go quick. So let's take a look at what's actually sold. The people are asking 25, 15, you know, Every now and then you get one crazy person asking like 50. But yeah. What do they actually sell for? Let's see here. So 30 bucks for this one with the cool print. 14 for this with 815 shipping. They they undersold. They they sold that a little too cheap, but they probably wanted to move it. 22, 19, the purple one. Probably could have got a little more for that. 21, 20, 13, again, that's too cheap for that. 25, 18, they could have got 25. 24, 29, vintage, see the vintage goes for a little more. That's kind of a common thing. If these are yours and I'm saying you could have got more, don't take it personal. 
I do that all the time. I, I, I sell cheap just to move stuff. So I'm just doing this for educational reasons to say that you could have got more because look at the market price. $15.99, that could have been up more. Anyway, that's the idea. That's Eddie Bauer. The ones with the prints go for more. Vintage goes for more, and they go way, way faster than regular Eddie Bauer. Normal Eddie Bauer flannels? Nope, I won't pick them up. Chamois flannels? All day long. Next, we got J. Crew, which you won't catch me picking up a J. Crew flannel shirt. Chamois flannels, on the other hand, I will. 87% sell through rate. And that's only going up most likely because it's like I said, it's the beginning of November. It might go up an additional 5 to 10% depending on what happens in the market. But this is some J. Crews. Elbow pads increase the value quite a bit. Again, they're mostly one color. This is an outlier. And I wonder if this is an actual chamois flannel. Just from looking at it, it doesn't look that thick. So, yeah, J. Crew. People are asking, you know, 18, 25, 21. This one's asking 49, not 88. It's a Wallace and Barnes, but still, we'll go over that in a second. I, I don't think they're going to get 50 bucks. So, what are they actually selling for? Let's find out. 45, that's, that's shocking. That's wool. I think it's wool. Classic long sleeve chamois flannel shirt jacket. Oh, it's a shirt jacket. A lot of these will be called shirt jackets. People will use that keyword because they're so thick. 26 plus shipping. They probably got about 29, maybe 25. 25, 45. That's a really good price for that. $10, that's whew, giving it away. 30 bucks, 18, 40 bucks. So J. Crew, as you can tell just from this little example, these J. Crews actually go for quite a bit more than L.L. Bean or even Woolrich. So J. Crew, it turns out, chamois flannels from J. Crew is kind of a little bit of a great, a great niche. I would say to go so far as to say it's a bolo. Keep an eye out, be on the lookout for J. Crew. Um, chamois flannels they sell really well for good money so let's look at Wallace and Barnes Wallace and Barnes goes for more as you probably would expect 45 40 35 45 but if you look at it it's not really distinguishable from J crew in really any way at all other than this tag here which I showed showed in previous videos so that's Wallace and Barnes, and that's also another one to look out for that you probably already knew, but if you didn't, it's a subline of J. Crew, and it always sells for more. It's a little bit more of a fancy J. Crew. The next one I have highlighted over here is Orvis. Orvis, not great for regular flannel shirts. Like I said, it's 41% on their normal flannels. Their chamois flannels are on fire at 121%. So let's take a look at Orvis chamois flannel shirt. This is what the Orvis chamois flannels look like. Most of them are plain again. There are some with plaid. But you don't see any fancy prints on these really except for this guy. Look at how short those arms are. This is one of those vintage three quarter length flannel shirts that always come back to me as returns saying the arms were too short. Even though you put in the listing that the arms are short, like 21 inches on a large, people still send it back because they don't read. Hell, the life of a reseller, right? It happens to everybody. Okay, so the Orvis, we have 18 active, and they're asking for 45, 24, 37, a higher asking price than the last few brands. What are we selling for? Actually, let's see how many we have active. 18. Selling for what? 22 sold. We got 25, 18, 
$18.99, vintage, vintage $89.95, that's not surprising, that pattern sells really well, $30, that's a, that's a great score right there, $20, $15, so yeah, you can find an Orvis chamois flannel, put it up for $25 if it's in good shape, it'll sell, it'll sell pretty good. Vintage Orvis, actually, just like Vintage Woolrich, the sell-through rate's not as good. I believe that's because people are overpricing them. So that's that's the deal with these chamois flannels. It's a great little sub-niche to get into. And be on the lookout for J. Crew. Be on the lookout for the, for the L.L. Bean, believe it or not. And the Orvis. Woolrich with the crazy patterns and look for the the camouflage patterns on these old on these old chamois flannel shirts and I mentioned I think I mentioned Cabela's it doesn't do great um, it's 59% sell through doesn't go for huge money but if you find a Cabela's it's worth looking into I just it doesn't excite me like L.L. Bean or J. Crew or Orvis or even Eddie Bauer for the chamois. So chamois flannel shirts. Find them, sell them, make money from them. Bye.